Okay, um, I guess welcome for those that are uh, joining and uh, my name is Luis Pastor and this is the third um, webinar of, uh, of this month of October and the title of the webinar is called um, email, um, email etiquette. Okay, so before we start, what is What is um what is etiquette? Okay, so anybody? What is what is etiquette? Well, while you guys are thinking about that, um Let's go and talk a little bit about this. Okay, um, just as a just as an introduction about this, um, let me say that um, all of this um, started the use of certain rules and certain um, cer I guess rules and some uh, do's and don'ts started because of the use of the internet as a source well not internet but exactly the use of the email as a source of communication so as email started you know uh, progressing and each person started using um, this more and more then um, there was a need for there was a need for um, people and uh, users to set up some sets of rules. So the idea of etiquette is basically that the use of the use or the standardization of some uh, rules uh, so that the communication process would be more like standardized or more um, uh, stress-free when we started um, sending emails to different people and communicating our uh, intentions or trying to express something in writing in this case through uh, email basically now some people call this uh, netiquette okay so it's some kind of pro I wouldn't I don't want to say protocol because it's like Spanglish it's more or less uh, some rules, some rules that we need um, to use in, in order to um, communicate. So, um, in this case, um, these rules are what we are going to talk about today, and some people call it netiquette, the certain uh, rules and things that you can and you can't do. Uh, in when you are communicating um, via email okay so basically that's what's happening so I have here Janela Gutierrez so I will say I'll say um, hi Janela okay so um, anybody does anybody know some some rules before I give you my rules well or the uh, anybody some rules that you know that you heard of hmm? nobody so today we have like eight people so we got Janela we got Nancy we got Elizabeth Irinia Diana um, Joyce and anybody else let's see and we have Brian I guess Brian is a new a new connection I guess I haven't heard Brian right Brian Brian is this your first sorry my spelling there is this your first okay 
So, some rules. Anybody? Anybody wants to give me some rules? No, not okay. Let's start with let's start with the first rule. Okay, the use of the two, the CC, and the BCC. Okay, so uh, the two, the CC, and the BCC. In the case of the two, well, normally in the email, uh, you have the guy that says like from, meaning, for example, myself that I'm sending. So it's like from Luis Pastor to, um, okay, from Luis Pastor to, uh, let's say, uh, Brian. Okay, so that's... Um, that's the uh, intention there. So it's from from Luis Pastor uh, to um, to Brian. Okay. Now we have um, we have another one that says CC, and we have another one that says um, BCC. In the case of the CC, what is CC? CC. Okay, in the case of CC, what is, um, let me see, let me get my mic there. CC, okay, what is CC? CC means, um, means a copy, okay, so you copy another person. So, in this case, um, I am, I am writing the email, I'm sending this email to another person, and additionally, I want to copy to a third um, person. Okay, so that's the um, CC um, case, KCC. So if you, uh, as you can see there, it says the CC is a person that, a third person that you want to contact or you want a third person to read um, this message. Okay. Now, there is another option. Okay, there's another option that says BCC. Okay. There's another option, BCC. Um, the other option is blind, blind copy. Uh huh. Yeah, that's very right. That's very good. Yes, blind. Uh, Diana, yeah, that's very good. Blind carbon copy. I suggest you don't use that one. Okay, that one is kind of. Um, if you are using that one, the intention of that one means that. You are copying to another person, and then you, there is a third person that you want to copy, but you don't want the rest of the people to know the name of that person that you will have copied on the email. So sometimes the BCC, I would say the BCC is not really proper proper behavior when you um, when you write emails. So I would say it sounds a little bit unethical. Okay, so normally. Uh, I would never use it. Uh, so I, ha I have never used that option. I have used the option the 2 and the CC because I want the person to know specifically to whom have I uh, copied, uh, have I copied email. Okay. So if I do blind, okay, blind is more like, you know, you're hiding, it, it gives the impression that you're hiding something. Of course, you're not going to see it when you when you see the, the heading or the heading of the email, you're just going to see the from, the to, the cc. You're not going to see nothing. Uh, you're, you're not going to see anything in the bcc. Uh, so uh, nobody's going to know. But the only way to, to find out about this is, for example, let's say that the, let's say that you're having a conversation with, let's say I send this email to Brian. And I copied Diana, and uh, for some reason you're having this conversation, Brian and Diana. And let's say that um, there's another person. Let's say, let's say Johnny. So you, you're you're speaking with Johnny, and John Johnny comes to you. Uh, Johnny comes to you. Uh, you're 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 having this conversation, Diana and Brian. And then uh, you and then Johnny. Um, Johnny overhears this. So, oh yes, uh, you know, uh, did you receive this email? And no, I didn't. Or yes. So in this case, will be yes, I did. So, and it's kind of not very nice because actually, you have sent this email 
secretly without anybody knowing about the the person about this other person so I don't see it very I don't see it very ethical okay and let me just throw the question then what do you um, what do you think okay I'll throw the question what do you think have you um, have you used have you used it have you used uh, BCC okay let's go for the next one the next item okay the next item is and I think this is uh, this is like a pain because this is the reply reply all okay this is the reply all and I think this for me this is like a nightmare people don't know exactly how to use this uh, particular one for example um, you receive an you receive an email okay you receive an email and um, then if you hit the option reply all basically everybody who is on the list will be um, will be contacted okay so for example I receive the email and I say reply all and let's say that all of you the five or the eight guys I have connected uh, receive the email okay because I said reply so everybody on the list receives that okay so then uh, the person who is receiving the email okay well that's, that's that's very good you don't use the BCC so the person that is receiving let's say Yanela received the email because I said reply everybody to all so Yanela received the email and she did the same thing so she said reply to all so then I receive the email again because she said reply to all so then it gets messy okay so I would say you have to be very careful with that reply all okay okay so unless the um, I would say the reply all is if you maybe if you started the um, if you started the communication for example I write an email and this uh, okay I write an email and I copy I do a CC everybody okay then in that case okay so the person person receives it now um, the reply all could be applicable if I receive an email and in the email I receive an email and I send it to a person I CC one person but when the person that is CC received the email she she or he thought it was a good idea to include some other people okay so he wanted to include three or more people so then I received the email again because there's something I maybe there's an extra piece of information that the person added so I received the email and then I answer or make comments then I would use the reply to all because it's not only the C and I I want the CC people to know the information plus the new guys that were incorporated to that particular list so that's where I would use the reply all but only one time okay so that everybody gets that piece of information okay so basically that's the idea okay all right um the next one in the next case okay the other thing about emails and that's a concept that many people have I guess forgotten uh, the email should be short okay the message should be short and concise so something like something like a telephone conversation so you're not gonna have a three or a four hour telephone conversation okay so the, the message in the email has to be short and concise so you're not gonna write a two or a three or a four page email okay that's not the intention of the email 
The intention of the email is to write something very short and very concise. So it's not to write a long story. Because imagine that we receive, for example, I would ask you, and I'll ask the question then, how many, how many emails um, do you receive per day? So how many emails do you receive per day? So imagine if you receive these very, very long emails. So then basically you're not going to have all the time and or all the energy to respond to all these emails. So think about maybe what is more convenient. Is it more convenient to make a telephone call? Is it convenient to write an email? So think about, or maybe it's more convenient to have a face-to-face, -face, maybe have a face-to-face -face, uh, interaction. Okay, so that's something that you will have to consider. Of course, the situation changes if, for example, the person that you want to contact is in the U.S. and you are in Peru. So maybe uh, it will be more convenient maybe to use, maybe to use um, something like, Waybacks or something like what we're using right now. For example, right now, I am um, I am connected, and then I have like here five people or six people that are connected at the same time. So I guess it's more convenient to have this uh, this kind of interaction. Okay, but so we have to think. Okay, three per day. That's not too bad. Are and are these um, um, Yaneda, are they long? Are they long? So that's something to consider, okay? So the idea is to be as concise and as short as possible. And the also the idea is, you know, to evaluate the options. No? For example, if, you, if this person is maybe a in another part of the world than maybe a telephone call or a teleconference or maybe something like Webex or something like uh, Skype or anything or any other uh, way or source of way of communicating. Okay, so that's something to evaluate. So because you know answering emails, reading emails, it's a it's it's an energy uh, it's an energy drainer. So I would say think about it. Okay, think about it. What what is your best um, your best option? Okay, let's check the next one. Okay, something about something about punctuation. Um, emails um, emails don't have to you know you don't have to be that you know perfectionist uh, in the in the uh, punctuation. Okay, so the idea here is just to use the basic punctuation. So you use the period and maybe commas. Okay, period and commas. Okay, that's the I guess the basic basic um, punctuation. Period, commas. Okay, so that's what we that's what we can use. Periods, commas. Okay, semicolons and all these other ones. Um, brackets and colons and all of that. No. Okay, so the idea here is to use just the basic punctuation periods and commas. Okay. Um, then another thing. Mm -hmm. Another thing about this, I guess that's a one about um, that's a one about pun punctuation. Okay. Um, now the other one we have That's the other thing, the format, okay, the format of the email, okay, the format of the email, okay, in this case, just a plain format, okay, plain, plain format, okay, plain format, you know, uh, you don't have just, you know, a period at the end of the sentence, okay, the, don't use, uh, don't use, uh, 
a color background for example uh, some people like don't use um, I don't know if you're familiar with this don't use um, don't use um, stationary okay do not use stationary stationary okay do so just plain white with maybe I don't know black black uh, ink okay or maybe blue ink but do not be like a background like pink background or like for example or like here like in my in my template here I have for example a, a blue background with black letters uh, no okay the idea is maybe white with maybe black okay not use a lot of colors do not use sophisticated maybe do not use uh, maybe this I don't know if you've seen you do not use any gifs uh, no GIF or any any sophisticated um, background okay and why why shouldn't you use this sophisticated background why okay why shouldn't okay so while you're thinking about that Okay, and I, I, as you can read here, it says don't use colorful backgrounds, fancy fonts, animated images. Okay, those uh, do not use them. Okay, do not use them. Okay, now um, the next one then. Um, okay, something that the other one is the use of abbreviations. Okay the use of abbreviation okay the only re recommendation I would say in the abbreviations is use the ones that are very common and the ones that everybody knows for example you have FY FYI which is for your information and BTY BTW by the way so BTW by the way FYI for your information FYEO for your eyes only ASAP as soon as possible and what is EOBD does do you know EOBD so make sure that the abbreviations that you are using the other person that receives the email knows about okay make sure that the other person that re is receiving the email that is reading the email knows what is this abbreviation okay for example sometimes you I don't know if you've seen this this one um, for example so make sure that those abbreviations you use the other person the person that receives the email knows and understands it okay so make sure that, that is happened so what about um, EOBD and what about TBD? What does that mean? EOBD and uh, TBD. So who do we have here? We have Janela, Irenia, Diana, Joyce. So what does it mean? EOBD or TBD? EOBD, TBD. Hmm? Think about it. Okay, Diana is typing, so let's see. What is EOBD or TBD? Between, between, no, between, what do you mean by, no, the B is not between, uh uh. No. Okay, Janela. Let's see what Janela you're writing there. I do not. Okay, you don't know. Okay. Um, this EBD. Okay, this EBD is. And. Uh huh. Let's see. Diana is typing something. So before. Aha, uh -huh, BTW, yes. BTW is by the way, yes. Okay, now we. I want to know, that's very good, uh, Diana. Now I want to know this one EOBD, EOBD, and T, 
B D. Which okay, E O B D and T B D. Okay. Anybody? Diana, Janela. I don't know if Brian is still on the line. Let's see who's there. No, Brian left. So Maricela, Irenia, Diana. So so I guess it's just today is a girls' night, huh? We have Joyce, Diana, Irenia, Maricela, Janela, and myself. Okay, so nobody? Okay, so E O P D is end uh -huh. end of end of what? End of Yes, if Y I is for your information, yes, E O B D end of business day. Okay, EOBD end of business day. Okay, EOBD end of business day. And TBD. TBD of course is to uh huh to be to be what? Mm hmm ASAP Diana, that's very good. ASAP as soon as possible. Okay, TBD is to be TBD is to be determined, okay? To be determined. Okay. Um so those so I would suggest that you use aha uh -huh, ASAP as soon as possible. That's very good. So I would suggest uh use the ones that the most common and the ones that the other person knows. Because, for example, if I'm writing an email to Diana or or Yanella and I use uh, EOBD and she doesn't know, then it's going to be very difficult. Okay, so I would say the most common ones, the most popular ones, as what what uh, Diana has mentioned, right? ASAP, ASAP, as soon as possible. FYI, for your information. BTW, by the way. Okay, those are the and I don't know. Maybe F Y E O. I don't think so because F Y E O F Y E O. I would say is not is not common. Not everybody knows. Not everybody knows what it means. Okay, so I would say use the ones that every almost everybody knows. Okay. Um. Next one. Now. The other thing about um, smileys, okay, smileys, and as you can read there, smileys in business, no, okay, smileys in business, no, and then smileys among friends, yes, and you have like, smiley, I'm sorry my spelling there, it's a smiley face, smiley, smiley, Face. Okay, I got a spelling mistake there. Smiley face. F A C E. Smiley face. So you have a smiley face, a wink, and shock or surprise. Smileys that you can use, but you can use that among friends. Okay, you shouldn't be using that in your business uh, in your business emails. Okay, don't use that in your business emails. Okay. Okay, let's go for the next one then. Okay, now the uh, salutations. Okay, salutations. Okay, salutations. Um, in this case, it means whether we are using, okay, Mr., Mrs., Miss, etc., etc. Okay, so I guess in the case of men, it's very easy because we use MR, which is Mr., Mr. Smith. I guess maybe in the case of uh, women, it's a little complicated because, um, Normally, okay, if we if it's miss, missus, okay, so I would say, uh, to be to be safe, I would say ms, okay, I would say ms, okay, ms, okay, to be safe, okay, so that's like a bit more neutral, okay, because 
if you write MRS, MRS misses, you don't know exactly. Let's say that you, you assume that the person is married, but maybe maybe the person is not, or maybe the person is uh, is not married, or maybe is uh, maybe divorced, or maybe widow, etc., etc. So the idea is not okay. Uh, then Norman, the other thing is um, I would say do as do as they do as the other person does first for, for example i in my emails i say uh mr mr john jones or something no so um i receive the email and the person in the salutation says hi louise so then i know that the person is a little bit more informal so then i would write hi john i wouldn't say mr smith because i know because she, he or she wrote to me and says, hi, hi, Luis. So I would write basically in the same, in the same manner. Okay. So I would, I would, my first initiative would be use a, use a, like Mr. Smith or Mr. Jones, et cetera, et cetera. And then wait for that second email when he's going to respond and use the one that the person is using. Okay. So he says, Hi, Luis, or just Luis, or any anything like that, or dear Luis. Some people say, for example, some people say something like uh, hi, or maybe hi, hi, Luis, or dear Luis, dear Luis, or just use the first name. So you would, it would depend on. I would say depends on how the person responds to that first. Uh, to that to that first email okay so that's the idea okay and then as as the last bullet says if you're not sure then stick to the formal one right stick to the formal okay and then you play you play it by ear now you see what you see how they would respond and then you start you start up uh, using that same form of um, communication okay all right um okay comments no okay while you guys are thinking about that then let me just go to the next uh, slide okay in the next slide is about the attachment Okay, the use of attachments. And in this case, you would have to um, be, I would say that the intention is try to use um, attached files that are not so dense. Okay, so the recommendation is maybe one megabyte. Okay, one megabyte. Okay, a file that is one megabyte, because a one megabyte is, let's say, quote unquote, is not heavy. Okay, it's not, it's not, it's not a heavy file. So, and in this case, you know, we don't know exactly about the qual. For example, here in Peru, the quality of the internet connection, uh, I, we would say the the bandwidth, right? So in this case, it depends a lot on uh, the bandwidth, okay? So for example, right now, for example, I'm connected, I'm using Wi-Fi, and um, let's say the speed of the connection at this moment, uh, there's a lot of traffic. So um, the idea will be to... And you don't know exactly the, about the quad. The idea will be here to send a file that is not so dense, that is not so big, so that everybody can read it. Okay? Because, for example, you're sending this email to another country or to another person, but you don't know exactly how much, what is her bandwidth, what is it, how the quality of her connection, the speed of the connection. So I would say, if you one megabyte is is good. Now, of course. There are some uh, 
when you're doing business, there are some companies that, for example, um, have asked, say that there's a maximum limit. Some companies in their uh, internet accounts, the corporate emails, have a maximum um, size of files that they can um, receive. For example, uh, maximum capacity. Okay, so some people say that their attachments should be maximum 5 megawatts. But that depends on basically sometimes the rules of each company. For example, one time I had to send, um, I had to send some attachments. And uh, they told me that make sure that your attachments do not exceed 5 megabytes. So if I was sending maybe 1 giga, 2 gigas, it was going to be possible because the, the inbox has a capacity uh, the maximum capacity, the, not the inbox, not the total inbox capacity, but per mail, uh, the the capacity of a mail attachment, the attachment in a mail, maximum capacity five mega megabytes. Okay, so uh, that's the so in one email maximum capacity five megawatts. Okay, mega so not megawatts, sorry, megabytes. So um, in this case, that's more, more or less the standard. And, and this is what happened to me. One time I had to send some information to a client. And the client said, uh, make sure that your attachment's maximum capacity is 5 megawatts, megabytes. And I had to send like maybe a giga. So I had, some, so I had to send several e emails so that I could, uh, so that I wouldn't exceed uh, the per mail capacity of five mega megabytes. Okay, so that's the that's the idea there. So, and the answer to that depends, as I said, uh, the quality of the internet. You know, so how fast is your internet? The broad the, the broadband, the bandwidth, and all these characteristics that okay, your your um, your uh, connection has. And yes, and some I don't know if it has happened to you, but sometimes it says uh, the term in English is that it bounces. No, so the, sometimes you receive that an alert that says that the following email was not able to be to be sent. No, and it says and it gives you some option number one. It's maybe because the inbox is very full. Or sometimes it says that the email exceeds the maximum capacity. Okay, so sometimes you have those those two um, considerations. Okay, so make sure that if you if you're able to do one megabyte, I would say it's perfect. And check if you have to do more, I would say one mega megabyte, five megabytes. If you have to do more, uh, make sure you you ask. Sometimes make sure you ask because sometimes um, the capacity is limited, especially in, in, in corporate, you know, in, in companies because companies, you know, are, are, they have many employees, so they receive a lot of emails. So it's not only you receiving the email, but it's other people. So if a company has like a 1,000 employees, 2,000 employees, or whatever around the world, then if you multiply that by the by the capacity. Then it's it, it's very logical that the companies have a kind of a restriction in the amount of uh, the size of the attachments that you're going to uh, that you're going to include, and that's why it's also important that it, also the format. I guess it comes to the other item that we were talking about the format. So if it's too fancy, if it's with videos attached, if it's with this uh, videos colors and everything. Then of course it's going to be a very the file with a lot of megas and say quote unquote heavy so then it's not it's not possible to be to be um, to be seen. okay all right um, next one then okay now this thing about the threads okay I guess we were talking a little bit about this uh, thread okay. Is when you send the first mail and then you receive the response and then so this basically is like a chain you send an email you receive a response and you respond in that same email so it's like 
kind of a, like a chain, okay, one after or so. Now it depends. It depends um, how important this is because maybe you in the same email, to it, many people respond. So because you want to have the whole picture, you know, you want to have this whole story. So uh, be very careful with that because sometimes what happens is you want to follow the thread but then the other thing happens if you are doing to reply all then it it, it it gets very messy okay so basically the threads are good because you want to follow the the whole sequence of uh, of the story of, of the of the email sometimes it's for example you're sending an email because you want you're sending an email to a client, and you want to uh, uh, you you want to ask the client if he received uh, the product, you know? and then the client writes, for example, something like, no, "Sorry, uh, no, or Luis, I did not receive the product." So then I say, "Okay." So then I'll respond to him, "Okay, I will check this." So all this, let's say, all the. All the sequence is very important to have a record of evidence or evidence of all the sequence of this the of the email. So it's so it gets like that's why we call it a thread. So now in other cases it's not necessary to have that, but it I would suggest it in the case of things like where you have to keep track of things. Okay, if you have to do a follow up, then it will be a good idea to to use this option. Otherwise. Just on a separate email. Okay. Um, the other one is uppercase. Um, the other one is uppercase or lowercase. Okay, uppercase or lowercase. So, uppercase. This is uppercase, and this is lowercase. Okay. So. Uppercase is capital letters, and lowercase is like sm smaller letter letters. Okay, so for example, in this case, uppercase, I would say never use uppercase. Okay, never use uppercase because if you're using uppercase in all the emails, for example, if I write something like this, hi, and no, I would say something like eh, something like this. I have a problem with my computer I sorry, I I oops sorry 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 oops I did something okay let me just cross that so I say I have a problem with my computer I need a quick solution something like that so if I'm doing that Okay, if I read that, okay, I would say the message here is that I would say, please don't, don't shout. Okay. I would say, please don't shout. Okay, basically that's what's happening. Okay, if I have an email like that. The recommendation here is only use uppercase Okay, capital letters, just to emphasize something. Okay, if you want to emphasize, highlight something. Okay, then use the, the capital letter. But otherwise, then no, because it it is very um, it's very rude to use uh, capital letters because the message is like if you're shouting. The other thing is, some people like to use the color of uh, red. Okay. Red is, I would say, like, like blood. Okay, so no. So the idea is to you not use the color red because the red is also shows it, it's a little bit of disrespectful. Okay, so the idea here is not to use, um, not to use the color red. Oh, and also the the uppercase because it will be like you're shouting. Okay. So stay away, stay away from those. Okay. Um, okay. Oops. Sorry. Okay. The next one. Okay. I guess. Hmm. Okay. Then. Oh. 
Okay, now, um, okay, I would say here, um, now we can take, and, um, if you have, um, if you have any questions, or if you have any other situations that you would consider maybe, uh, more, uh, more suggestion of things, of, of things that you shouldn't do, um, when you are writing, when you are writing emails. Okay, so any other things, any other, any other suggestions? Maybe comments, or maybe situations, something that has happened to you, something that has happened to you, uh, when you receive an email, or when you want to write an email, something that, <clears throat> anything that you, any situation or experience. Okay, Janela, could you be a little bit more specific? Uh, what do you mean? You mean, um, you mean situations like, you mean the color red? Or do you mean situations about uh, capital letters? Could you be a little bit more specific in your in your um, in your question, Janela? Please. Okay. While you guys are while you guys are thinking about this, um, I can tell you a couple of things, or maybe. I would say yeah, a couple of things um, from experience. Uh, okay, first of all, the people have people have different ways. People have different ways of writing email. Okay, people express themselves differently when they um when they write an email okay so um i would say the style of the email i would say that in that case from experience the emails i have received a uh, from business clients the emails are very precise very short concise uh, very short and straight to the point okay so it's not like not like us, the Latinos. The, the the Latinos, for example, when I receive an email from a Latino, um, they are extremely formal. Something like uh, something like, dear Luis, eh, I uh, I hope that you are you are doing well, and uh, I want to take this opportunity to say to say hello and at the same time if it is possible could you please um, send me the information uh, because this information is very important for me and please uh, could you send me this information uh, so and and then it write something like I would I, I appreciate your uh, you I appreciate your kindness and uh, looking forward to hearing from you etc et so the emails tend to be very very long okay and so they don't go straight to the point so the email is basically straight to the point so something like hi Louise I could say maybe how are you? Hey, hi Luis, how are you? Um, could you please send me the files, you know, the f files, the three files, the four files, before uh, six o'clock? Thank you. And that that's it. So um, the idea of the email is to be just short and to the point. Now, if you need to send maybe. Uh, if you need to send, for example, if you need to send, uh, if you're writing a, if you have to send something like a report or like an opinion, 
I wouldn't I wouldn't use the email like the body of the email. What I would do is I would send an attachment. If that's the case, if you if you want to extend yourself, I would basically maybe send you an attachment and use a word document and uh, and say write what I what I what I want to what I want to say. Maybe if it's a report or some an opinion, okay, an opinion or something, okay. So I would say I would say think first as to what will be the best channel if you're gonna use um, uh, you could use for example Webex as as I mentioned you know you can use Webex you can use uh, Skype uh, you can do a teleconference video conference so it depends exactly on how much you um, how much um, you need to communicate or you need to report okay so if it's if it's long I would say if it's longer use the use an attachment and answer in a, in a word file or something um, if not then just um, just uh, do do it with an email uh, the other thing from experience that has happened to me is um, the use of, for example, um, I received an email, um, uh, something like it says here, uh, "Hi," so it says, "Hi, Luis." So then, I would respond the same thing, like "Hi," and then, so I would basically is, um, I would, I would wait for that second email as a response, and then. I would respond in the same way. Now, if I am writing that first email, okay, if I am writing that first email, I could if it's if it's business, I would say Miss Miss uh, Smith or Mr. Jones, something like that. And uh, that's how I w I I will uh, start it, okay. And then um, I would say something. Uh, I will wait for that second one. And sometimes the and the return in most of the cases is like dear oh, dear Louise or just my name Louise or sometimes hi just hi sometimes hi Louise or something like that. So I will wait for that. If I'm writing the first email, I would say Mister. Mr. Jones, something like that. Okay. The other thing is the extension of emails. We talked about that. Uh, the I received sometimes capital letters, and this email I was receiving this email from a person from China. So a person from China wrote to me with capital letters. So, um, so the person wrote to me in capital letters. I didn't exactly know why. I don't. I don't. I have no idea why he did it like that. But it was funny because I responded to him in lowercase, and then he responded to me also in lowercase. So I don't know. Maybe it was some. Uh, involuntary it was not done on purpose it was not intentional maybe that was that was the case because he started with capital letters and then when I responded I responded in, in lowercase and uh, then the third the fourth the fifth uh, the emails were like uh, were with just uh, lowercase so um, So uh, basically, that's uh, that's the reason. Okay, that's the reason. That's the reason why. Um, so those are cases of the uh, that, those are the cases that I could say about the, the use of this. So basically, it, it gives uh, it, it it is uh, so just uh, see what like what happens. No, because as I told you, this case the person started with 
with uh, capital letters and then I responded and I didn't use capital letters and it all went uh, very well okay and I had other emails like for example uh, there are other emails like they say something like uh, which which is very nice I think something like when they say when they say like how are you when they say how are you and and then I say when I answer no um, and when I say some when I answer like what about you no I when I answer something like, I answer something like this uh, I hope I would say something like how are you fine thanks for asking thanks for asking uh, no, thanks for asking and I said by the way uh -huh. how are you uh -huh. and then just as a just as just as a being polite the formality sometimes the people that you can for example this person that I contact you that I was contact contacted by she started like that and that for me was okay because and it was nice you know something like okay hi I'm doing okay thank you what about you I'm doing fine and we just had this short kind of interaction like that so yes so uh, feel free to um, feel free to do it okay sometimes it, it's nice because the other person uh, wants you know not to have a, a more not as a cold um, contact because normally the email is like cold you know it's like in this case they just just write but we since we're having this frequent emails back and forth then you know the other person you know says you know things like that oh how are you and I say fine thanks for asking what about you or by the way how are you and we have this little we have this little interaction no? and then the other thing that is very very interesting is that if by any moment um, for example I have this other situation in which I received an email we've been constantly you know having email contact and finally you know I was able to meet the person you know? so it was, it was kind of like it's nice because you put you know a face you know uh, a face to name so it, it's really um it's really um, it's really nice when when you have that that opportunity of finally contacting that person that you just you know you were just be just having these emails back and forth so that was kind of a that was kind of nice you know when you have when you have this face you know, you have face to the name you know? like for example right now we're having this interaction but uh, it's just uh, just a one way so you, you are listening to my voice and uh, I am not listening to your voices and uh, and I see when I when I ask for some comment or something that maybe I have five people connected but let's say two or three people are the ones that are making comments and from the list of people for example that I have in the connection I know that today for example I think there are two new people I have been connect I've been I have seen the well I have seen the others okay more frequent so that's that's something around uh, emails then the other thing about the emails is um the other thing about the emails is the the fact that um, the emails again um, don't have to be like so perfect in terms of the writing okay the normally we don't you know we don't write in emails complete sentences we write like sometimes we write more phrases than complete sentences and that's because we want you know the messages to be straight to the point we want to be the mess the messages like that if you have to say something more then you my recommendation is to use the other channels no like like a telephone call uh, Webex or Skype or other things no? because the email is like a, 
I would say like a short, short, like a it's like a short message system, no? okay? Or if you want to think about it, it's something like the chat, like the chat with you that we're having at the moment, no? So I write just short sentences, uh, short or phrases, short phrases, just words, and so I think that's the the, the main uh, the main um, idea around the use of the of the emails, and of course the etiquette. The etiquette is very, very important because if we are all on the same page, then it's actually very, very easy to have a standardized method of communication because at the end, we don't know the person, okay? We don't know the person who is on the other side, okay? So we get the impression of the person through the way he or she writes. Because we don't have a we don't have a face to that we don't have a face to that name we cannot see that person so the only thing that we are receiving is basically through the writing through the way the person writes we kind of are have a partial picture of the person that is in contact with us so I would say that's the the main um, takeaway from this, okay? So, so the email is short, concise, to the point, and we have to write in such a way that we don't disturb or we don't give that false impression, no? Okay? Uh, so I would say, to end this, I would say, um, I think the expression is something like, uh, there is, I think there isn't a, there isn't a second chance for a first impression. Is that uh, something like this? There, there isn't a second chance, something like this, for a first. I think that's it. That's the, I think that's the message. Yes. Can somebody help me there? Is in a second chance for a first impression. I think that's kind of like the expression, so meaning that um, you know we have to um, we have to be as clear, concise, and following certain rules, so that we have some kind of uh, uh, and I'll be here a little sarcastic, so we that we can have a little bit like a piece of love in the in the networks, no. And the same thing, I think we can take the same thing also to things like Facebook, Twitter, to other uh, social media, okay? Because um, we don't want to, and I guess, I think that the term already exists, we don't want to do cyberbullying, no? because we have bullying, and we don't want to do cyberbullying, so we want to have, uh, we want to use the email and other media, social media and others, as a way of communicating, but there has to be respect. There has to be, like as I said, peace and love. You know, in the way we we communicate. Okay, so that is basically. I guess we we can say. I don't know if you this uh, this expression. The expression is like this. We can. We can call it a day. Okay. So, any final questions? Any final thoughts? Any final reflections? Any comments, opinions before we disconnect? No? Well, uh, I'll give you like 30 more seconds if you have like questions or comments. So you have 30 seconds to do it. If not, then I'll say I'll say goodbye and uh, hope you are with me the next uh, the next week will which will be the the last uh, 
session or webinar of the month. Okay, so. Okay, I'll wait for Janela to to type her comment or question or her goodbye. Okay, Janela, nothing more to say. I would say thank you too and uh, I hope that you enjoy this and I hope to see you, Janela, uh, next week on the 25th for the last uh, topic of the month. Okay, so uh, um, enjoy your the rest of the night and hope to see you next week. Bye.